When a mayfly emerges from its cocoon, it has 24 hours to fly around and find a mate before it will perish. Regardless of whether or not it's successful, it's going to die. The mayfly takes its charge very seriously. This is its job. This is its responsibility. This is its life. It must fly around and successfully find a mate. From its perspective, very, very, very important stuff. From our perspective, while the, the life of a creature that flies around a mate sounds like it might be fun, in the grand scheme of things, we realize that its significance is very small. Whatever, they're mayflies. You're going to fly around for a day and breed and die. Your existence is very unimportant. From the mayfly's perspective, very, very important. However, the mayfly's life is not absurd because the mayfly lacks the ability to realize that its life is so unimportant. And so it's okay for it to take that existence seriously. Human beings, on the other hand, we know that in the grand scheme of things, our lives are very, very short. We know that the impact of our actions is very limited. A few generations after we pass, few people will remember us, unless we're one of the, the outliers in history that does some great thing that gets recorded. But in any case, civilizations come and go. Even if we're a president, cure some disease, etc., just extend the timeline far enough out, and you're going to see that Nobody cares. And in fact, at some point, our sun is going to burn out. Earthly existence will end, etc. At the same time, we can't help but take our existences very seriously. The type of car we drive, our salaries. I spent a ridiculous amount of time fretting over the landscaping in my yard and whether or not I could plant grass seed in time before it got too cold this fall. At the same time, I know full well that I'm going to die in a few years, hopefully 60 or more years, <laughs> something along those lines. But still, it'll be soon. And my impact will be limited. It's probably going to be greatest on my, my kids, my direct lineage, the people that I knew. But it will fizzle out eventually. Eventually, all of our impacts will fizzle, fizzle out. But at the same time, I worry and I fret over the silliest, silliest things. Thomas Nagel argues in The Absurd that it's this combination of realization that our lives in the grand scheme of things really don't matter, but at the same time, the seriousness and the unending seriousness with which we take our lives that creates this absurdity. Now, there are several different strategies that people take to try to transcend this absurdity. One is to tie themselves to something bigger than themselves, some great cause, so perhaps a political movement or to science or medicine or the environment. Nagel says that this is ineffective because if, the, if our own lives and our own interests and our own actions need justification, and if everything that's justified requires justification in reference to something else, then whatever we tie ourselves to would itself also need justification. And so my life's important because I'm involved in the communist revolution or the, um, uh, the coming, uh, bringing about of a flat tax or the, the curing of cancer, or the staving off of global, global warming. Well, you might ask, what's so important about the communist revolution? Well, it's justified because it'll benefit the lives of ordinary persons. Well, what's so good about their lives? Why, what, what justifies the importance of their lives? Well, their lives have impacts on others. Well, well, what justifies the importance of the others' lives? Well, they're going to impact others. If you go down this path, whether it's, it's through a political movement or science or medicine or whatever, you're going to have this unending chain of everything that's justified needing another justifier if you go down that path to begin with. In fact, Nagel even argues that people who, who justify the importance of their lives by their service to a deity or a creator through religious sacrifice, involvement in church, etc., in the priesthood, their, their justification of the importance of their existences is subject to similar critique simply on grounds that it's at least open to doubt that spending one life in the service of a creator might not, in the grand scheme of things, be terribly important or impressive, etc. It says at the very least, that's open to doubt. And so this justification chain does not work. Another way people try to transcend the absurdity is by taking the Buddhist route. The Buddhist route is to, to deny our desires. The Buddhists argue that the source of suffering is desire. When you let go of a desire for things, you let go of all suffering. You become a person who doesn't suffer anymore. So you stop wanting a nicer car, and you stop caring about whether or not the grass is going to grow. You stop worrying about your salary and your haircut, etc., etc., etc. You let all these things go. Well, 
Nagel points out that this is kind of extra absurd because to get to the point where you have the discipline and you develop the mindset where you can let go, you have to first be very, very serious about yourself and about your situation. But if nothing really matters, then it doesn't really matter <laughs> that you're taking things seriously. And so it's kind of a, a paradox. In order to let go, you have to be really, really serious in order to maintain that mindset and such. So he doesn't think that that strategy works either. Ultimately, Nagel argues that we don't have to justify the things that we think make our interests important, our desires important, beyond anything other than reference to the fact that, that we have them. He says we don't need a, a fancy justification to tell us why it's important to take an aspirin or some Tylenol when we have a headache or to, to tell our children we love them or, or to go to a, a concert of a musician that we enjoy. He thinks that if we have these these desires, if we have these interests in our lived lives if, as human beings, it's all the justification we need. Now, that's not a totally satisfying answer in light of the fact that he's making the case that everything we do really doesn't matter that much. And so for them to, him to then turn back and say, well, you don't need these bigger justifications. It's just a way to get away from that, that infinite regress of justifications problem that, that he, he saw earlier and also to avoid that, that uh, extra absurdity of, of taking the, uh, the Buddhist route. There's a concept that Nagel considers in the article several times. It's called epistemic skepticism. Epistemology, of course, is just the branch of philosophy that deals with knowledge and truth and the limitations of our senses, things that we can know, what constitutes genuine knowledge, etc. And skepticism is the view that we can't trust our senses and our perceptions, and we can't trust them to the extent that we can't know for sure that we're not dreaming right now. I can't know for sure that the entire universe and all the people in it aren't just characters and props in a very elaborate dream. It could be the case that I'm the only consciousness that exists or has ever existed. Everything else is just a figment of my imagination. That view is called solipsism, by, by the way, and it's, it's a little bit scary. And there are arguments that try to, to show how we can, with reason and with logic, dismiss it, but Nagel doesn't think that those arguments are are fully convincing. And he thinks that this, this absurd condition we have and our inability to es escape the absurdity, because no matter how much we realize that our lives aren't that important, we still take them very, very seriously. He thinks that's similar to epistemological skepticism in that both of these perspectives arise from the fact that we can step back from our, our normal, enmeshed, everyday lives and we can reflect on our capacities, the limitations of our uh, perceptions, our reasoning abilities, and also reflect on the unimportance of our lives. And also he doesn't think that we can fully escape either the absurdity or epistemological skepticism or the possibility that everything is a dream by using reason alone. One way we can temporarily quell these worries is by simply reimmersing ourselves in everyday life. And, and he provides a, a neat quote in a footnote from David Hume, a Scottish philosopher, who thought about the limits of his perceptions and whether or not he could be sure that whether or not life was only a dream or whether the things that he perceived were actually the way they actually are in, in reality. And here's a quote that he provides from Hume. Hume says, most, more, most fortunately it happens that since reason is incapable of dispelling these clouds, nature herself suffices to that purpose and lures me of this philosophical melancholy and delirium either by relaxing this bent of mine or by some avocation and lively impression of my senses which obliterate all these chimeras. That was more complicated than it needed to be, but here in more simplistic and easier to understand language, he follows by saying, I dine, I play a game of backgammon, I converse, I am merry with my friends, and when after three or four hours of amusement I would return to these speculations, they appear so cold and strained and ridiculous that I cannot find in my heart to enter into them any further. So what, what uh, Hume was saying and what Nagel is also recommending is that when you begin to wonder, is this all just a dream and man, my life really doesn't matter that much and I can't help but take it seriously and you're frustrated by this stuff and you, you consider philosophical arguments that try to reassure you but they're not very effective, they say just stop with the philosophizing, go back to what you were doing, play some basketball, you know, go to the movies, Go on a hike. Uh, go back. Worry about your career some. It's not a, not a big deal. This is simply our condition as, as humans. We can't know for sure that we're not in the matrix right now. 
it's just too bad that uh, in the grand scheme of things, our lives apparently aren't that, that important, but we can't help obsessing over them. Just go live your life. That's ultimately the cure that, that Nagel proposes. He says, accept this as a limitation, as an unavoidable absurdity, and move on. He says there's not necessarily a problem here to be solved. He rejects the, the idea that this would warrant suicide as a, a way out of this. He thinks that's ridiculous and escapist is what he calls it. But at the same time, he warns against being overly dramatic and worrying too much about the fact that our lives don't matter that much and we can't avoid but, but fretting over them. He says, whatever, just live your life. It's just, it's just a fact of life. And one benefit of the article, I think, is that once you reflect on all of this and you realize it's just a limitation, you can step back and look at yourself taking things too seriously and that can help you better deal with them. While I was preparing some notes for this lecture, I got a phone call from Lowe's Delivery and they were telling me that these these patio chairs that I had ordered, they were on a wonderful wonderful sale. They were like 75% off. It was at the end of the season. Really nice patio chairs. They swivel around and were like these rocking chairs and cushioned. Saw a model at Lowe's and my family just loved them, ordered them. They called me while I was t making these notes and they told me, I'm sorry, sorry Mr. Deaton, we, we've had a problem with your order. We can't deliver these chairs. They don't have them at the store, etc. I was very frustrated. I was, of course, respectful on the phone. I told them this was frustrating. I asked them to look into how they could resolve it, etc. But I was very disappointed. But when I hung up the phone, I reminded myself how petty and ridiculous, ridiculously unimportant whether or not I got those particular patio chairs is in the grand scheme of things. And that's one benefit of this article and one, one benefit of reflecting on the absurdity of our lives and the seriousness that we take uh, with it. And that is... We can take things with a grain of salt and not worry quite too much about life's obstacles when they inevitably arise. Thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed.